Hi everyone, it's Kieran here from UNE Discovery Voyager Online. Now, as you can probably tell from all the safety equipment I'm wearing, this isn't the experiment we're going to look at today, isn't one that we're going to try at home, but it might be one that you've seen before because it's a very popular experiment called Elephant's Toothpaste. And today I'd just like to go really in depth and show you exactly what's going on and how it works. So Elephant's Toothpaste, you might have seen um, if Discovery Voyager has come out to your school and done some chemistry, or you might have seen this um, on a video online. It's, it's a very popular experiment that we see all over the place. Um, and it relies on this stuff here, hydrogen peroxide. Now, I know that that bottle looks pretty nasty, but I've got a much friendlier version of this chemical to show you, and that's this one here. So this is what a molecule of hydrogen peroxide looks like. It's made up of two atoms of oxygen, the two O's, and two atoms of hydrogen, the two H's, or one hydrogen per oxide, hydrogen peroxide. Now hydrogen peroxide is very similar to another molecule that you might have come across before, and that is this one. This is a water molecule, or H2O. And hydrogen peroxide is actually a very unstable molecule. It really doesn't like having that extra oxygen there. So what can happen is the hydrogen peroxide can break down and change into water. And there's lots of different ways it can do that. Um, but if it gets exposed to UV light or sunlight, uh, that can trigger that reaction to break it down, which is why we keep it in these black bottles. Now, if we look at what that whole reaction looks like. We start off with some hydrogen peroxide molecules and they change into water molecules. But if you're good at maths, you might notice that there's something missing there, which is a couple of extra oxygens or oxygen gas, O2. That's the stuff that we're breathing now. So we'll pop that over here as well. So now that we can see, we've got four atoms of hydrogen, four atoms of oxygen, and they change into well, four atoms of hydrogen, four atoms of oxygen, but in a different configuration. This chemical reaction is kind of like taking a Lego model, breaking it apart, and putting all the pieces back together in a different way. That's kind of what a chemical reaction really is when we look at them really closely. But I think the moment has come to actually see what this reaction looks like in real life. So let's take a look, shall we? So there's our hydrogen peroxide. Looks very much like water. This is one of those chemicals that we have to keep a close eye on that we don't mix it up because it is quite bad for us if we get it on our skin or in our eyes. You might have used hydrogen peroxide as a disinfectant before, but that was 10 times weaker than the one we have here. So the stuff that you can buy at the chemist or in the shops, that would only be about 3%. This one is 30%. Now because we're producing oxygen gas, I've put a little bit of detergent into our bottle as well, and hopefully that will catch all that gas that we make and turn it into some lovely bubbles or foam. Now to get this reaction to happen, it's actually already happening, uh, just very, very slowly. We can't really see anything happening in there right now. So what we need is something called a catalyst. And a catalyst is any chemical that triggers that reaction and helps it go along. Uh, so UV light is an example of a catalyst. If UV light hits hydrogen peroxide, it will break it down and let that reaction happen. We could also use something like yeast. Yeast has a little enzyme in it called catalase that helps that uh, reaction start. But today, I'm gonna use some potassium iodide. Because this stuff makes it go really, really fast. Are you ready? So here's a mixture of potassium iodide that I've mixed up before. And let's see what happens when I pop this in. So 
So the videos you might have seen online might have had our elephant's toothpaste shooting up into the air. And if you get the mixture of uh, peroxide and the catalyst just right, you can get that to happen. I'm still working on mine. But did you see all that steam coming off the top? I didn't really, uh, I don't know if it's gonna show up very well on the, uh, on the video, but luckily I've got a thermometer here. So let's see just how warm that peroxide mixture is getting. How warm is that? So that's about, that's nearly, nearly 70 degrees if I'm reading that right. It's upside down for me, so I could, <laughs> So this gets really, really hot. Right in the middle of that reaction, it could get up as high as 100 degrees. And this is what we call an exothermic reaction. That's a reaction that puts out a lot of heat uh, as the reaction goes along. So by breaking these hydrogen peroxide molecules apart and rearranging them, we're actually releasing energy as those molecules change shape and break apart. Uh, and that's where all that heat is coming from. So inside all these bubbles, in you know, all that foam that we made, is our oxygen gas. And all the steam that we saw coming off the top um, and in that mixture that's in the foam there is all the water that we made. So hopefully now, there's actually no hydrogen peroxide left. It's all been destroyed and turned into those very safe chemicals, oxygen and water. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed and hopefully we'll come out to your school soon and show this to you in person. Catch you later.